Okay, now we are going to learn the some of the landmarks of the skull, which I think you should know. These are fairly simple, fairly fr straightforward. The first landmarks that we're going to meet are going to be on the mandible, the lower jaw here. The first one that I want to show you is this protrusion. Most people would consider that the chin, and you're right. It is the bony chin, but this is considered the mental eminence. It is an eminence. It is a protrusion. So that's the eminence. And it's called mental because it's on the chin. And I always think of it this way. Hmm. Wondering. Hmm. Whenever you're, whenever you're, hmm. Thinking about things. You rub your chin. Think of it like mental is chin. Okay. So the first one is the mental eminence. The other two, which are on either side of that, You've got a foramen here and a foramen there. Every time you hear the word foramen, it means hole. These two foramina actually are called the mental foramina or the right mental foramen, the left mental foramen. Okay? Mental spelled just like you think it would be. Foramen spelled F-O-R-A-M-E-N. Foramen. Foramina, you just add an A. Mental foramina, okay? Those are actually where the nerves come through from the brainstem to innervate the face. All right. Then we have the body of the mandible. The body is the horizontal part of this big kind of horseshoe-shaped bone. The horizontal part is called the body. The vertical part is called the ramus, R-A-M-U-S. The ramus is, some people call it the vertical ramus, but there is no horizontal ramus, so it's kind of a, a pointless distinction to make. On this, we have two pretty obvious uh, features. On the, the front of it here, along the coronal suture, is called the coronoid process. It gets the idea, I mean, from the coronal plane, not suture. So it's called the coronoid process. And right behind it is the condyle. It's also called the mandibular condyle, to clarify, because there are other condyles in the body. The mandibular condyle is actually where the mandible rotates within that joint. This is called the temporal. Remember, you learned the temporal bone? Temporal mandibular joint, TMJ. Probably heard that term before. So we have the body, mental protuberance or mental eminence, mental foramina, body, ramus, coronoid process, and the condyle of the mandible. Okay, moving on. We've got two more foramina here, which do the same thing as the mental foramina. Only these are suborbital foramen. Sub because they're underneath the orbit. Suborbital foramina. You can see this one and this one. Those also innervate the face. Then we have, usually you'll have either notches right here in the top of the eye orbit. You can see that little notch right there. Or you may have a foramen. Um, I don't see one out in any of the skulls I have here, but it could be either a notch, as you see there, or an actual hole. But that is the superorbital foramen. While we're in the superorbital area, there is the brow ridge. Do you guys see this big brow ridge going on? That is considered a superorbital, or supraorbital. Uh, people call it both meaning it's above the eye orbit, and torus, because it's kind of this lump that sticks out. A torus is supposed to be like a donut shape, but it's not spelled T-O-U-R, like the bull. Instead, it's spelled T-O-R-U-S, like the shape, torus. All right? Superorbital torus. Now we have this really obvious suture here. You guys see this suture? That suture, which is right where you'd put your tiara or your crown, is called the 
coronal suture, as in crown suture. So named because, hey, that's where I put my crown. Butting right into that is the sagittal suture. The sagittal suture is so named, if you happen to be a Sagittarius, you know that your star sign is the archer. And arching, it arcs up and over the, the shape of the skull. It's that arc that it's describing. So this is the sagittal suture going right down the middle. Also known as your mohawk suture. But nobody actually calls it that, but that's a good way to remember it. Sagittal suture, your mohawk suture. Moving down, another major suture in the skull. This goes up and around and de delineates from the parietals to the occipital bone. This is called, because of its shape, see how it kind of comes up and then back down? Almost looks like an upside down Y. That is called, that is based on the Greek letter lambda. So it is called the lambdoidal suture, the lambdoidal suture. Okay. On the bottom of the skull, we have several features that we're going to draw your attention to. The first one, this kind of bulbous shape here, that's called the mastoid process. You've heard of the sternocleidomastoid muscle that goes from the root of this across your neck and then joins up at the sternum and clavicle right here and it allows you to turn your head okay so the mastoid process by the way it's named after the medical word for breast mastoid like getting a mastectomy or a mastodon oddly enough right in front of it you guys see a pretty prominent ear hole that's where your q-tips go <coughs> This ear hole is called the external auditory, because it's on the outside of the bone, auditory, because it's associated with your ear, meatus. It's spelled like meet us, as in M-E-A-T-U-S, meatus. A meatus is technically the term for like a tube of bone. So foramina are just holes. This is more of a three-dimensional tube of bone, the meatus, the external auditory meatus, or E-A-M for short. Beside that, right in front, you guys may see this little process coming up here. Let me try to get it. Yeah, there we go. See this process coming up here? This is called the styloid process because somebody thought it looked like a pencil or a pen. Styloid after stylus. Now, we're not going to go through all the little holes in the skull. That's a little more advanced than where we're going to go today. But we're going to talk about this big one. The big giant hole here is called the foramen, because it's a hole in the bone. Magnum, which literally means big. So it's the big hole. This hole is through which your brain stem goes through and connects up with your spinal cord. On either side of that, you see another pair of condyles. These are called the occipital condyles because they're part of the occipital bone. The occipital condyles. Continuing with the occipital, you guys have, if you look closely, you see this protuberance right here of bone on the occipital? It's called the external, because it's on the outside, occipital, because it's on the occiput bone, protuberance, or EOP. External occipital protuberance, okay? Which brings us around to the, this hole here, this kind of arch. This is called the zygomatic arch. And this is what, through which, some of the chewing muscles go. If you look right along here, you see this ridge. That sometimes is fairly prominent, other times fairly hidden. But this ridge connects up to this bone that goes through there and allows you to help chew. Two more, which are the same thing, there's just two of them. That is this really interesting suture along the side here. The reason this suture is so weird is because it's shaped differently. Let me get the other skull to show you. If you look at this skull, do you see this suture here? 
It doesn't look like these squiggly sutures that we met before. It's a much smoother, flatter suture. In fact, this suture slides along itself like that and actually does slide a little bit while we chew. Let me pull off this bone and let you take a better look at it. Actually, I think I have to get in behind it. There we go. If I pull this off, you can see there's striations along here. And indeed, there are striations along the inside of the suture. The suture itself is very, very thin and flat, sliding up against itself like that. This is called the squamosal suture because the word squamous or squamous, depending on your accent, means flat. It's a flat suture made for sliding. And that is all of the features of the skull that we're going to go over in this course.